Hello there and welcome to another CodeZonk video. We are once again on Code.org where we're going to be getting ready for the Hour of Code, which is actually coming up here in just a few weeks. And this time, we're looking at a new program by Code.org which uses Minecraft to teach kids how to code. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, I'm about to jump right in, but first I just want to say that we are looking at this because the Hour of Code is almost upon us, and of course I do encourage Anyone who's interested in learning how to code who's in school right now, I encourage you to talk to your teachers, see if you can get them to participate in the Hour of Code program. Of course, if you are a parent or if you are a teacher, encourage your schools to participate as well. And this is one really great way to do that. We'll take a look at this one. Of course, it's targeting kids who are age 6 and up, and it's using a Minecraft theme to teach kids how to code. We'll take a look at it now. Now, just like the other uh, tutorials on Code.org, when you bring it up for the first time, it's going to show you videos. I've jumped over to the uh, uh, to the notes that uh, they would show in the event that you don't support video. Ordinarily, you'll have video introductions that sort of teach you what's going to happen as you as you progress throughout these exercises. I'm just going to skip over that and jump right into it. We're not going to do this whole thing. We're just going to demonstrate what's there, give you a sense of how things work, see if maybe this is something that you want to do with. Uh, with your kids or with your students in school for the Hour of Code. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to pick a character. I'm going to go ahead and pick Steve, but you can pick Alex as well. Okay, so we're going to add a second move forward command to reach the sheep. So that's our goal in this particular exercise. Well, this is us right here. We are Steve, and we need to reach the sheep. They've already included a move forward which gets invoked on the run button when that gets pressed so we need to add one more per the instructions and we'll go ahead and click on run and see what that does for us okay so we did it and then the nice thing about code.org is when you're using some of these drag and drop uh, puzzle pieces to build your code you actually have the option when you've completed a level to show your code so you can see how those blocks that you're dragging and dropping actually translate into real JavaScript. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, what is a very important resource? Many of the things that uh, you use in Minecraft are made from it, so we're going to walk to the tree. We're going to use a destroy block command to chop down the tree. Let's try it. Okay, so we know that when we press the run button, we need to move forward twice to stand next to the tree and then use that move forward command. Let's go ahead and move forward two times. And you hear those click into place. Now we'll use the destroy block and we'll press run. And there you have it. So when you when you've succeeded like this, it lets you know that hey, congratulations, well done. You can Click on that show code button to see how those blocks translate into JavaScript and then you can continue. It is sheep shearing time. We're going to use the shear command, which is going to be new to us, and we're going to use that to gather wool from both of the sheep. So it sounds like we're going to be moving, we're going to be turning, and then using a new command. Let's have a look. So we do need to move forward twice here. So let's go ahead and put that into place. Whoops. Make sure you snap it into place and you can hear it make a sound so you know you're doing it right. All right, move forward twice is going to put us right next to this first sheep, and we'll go ahead and shear. And then what we'll do is we'll just turn right to face the new direction. We're going to just move forward one time at that point, and then shear the other sheep. Let's see if we got it right. Looks like we did it. So let's have a look and see what the code looks like. When we complete our levels, obviously, it lets you know that you can click on this show code button to see what it looks like. And you see we've got these move forward commands that translate into JavaScript functions. This is what they look like if you were to look at them in raw code. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, we need to build a house before the sun goes down. Of course, if you're a Minecraft player, you know why that's critical, because all the bad guys come out when the sun goes down, so you got to keep yourself protected. A house requires a lot of wood, so we're going to cut down all three trees. Let's try it. This is really going to be uh, moving and using uh, the destroy block command that we used in a previous lesson. So they've already done a little bit of the code for us. Let's have a look at what they've done. They've had us move forward three times, then destroy the block, and then turn left, and then uh, move forward one time. We know that to continue this, we need to move forward another two times to get right up to the second tree, 
at which point we would go ahead and destroy the block and then we'll turn left to face the last tree we will move forward three times let's get one more in there and then we'll destroy that block as well. Now if you look at the code, you see that there is a repeatable pattern here. You move forward three, three times, destroy the block, and then turn left. You do that all over again. Move forward three times, destroy the block, turn left. And then you move forward, and then destroy the block. You don't turn left, but you'll see that there is this repeatable pattern here, or repeated pattern I should say, of moving forward three times and destroying the block. So this suggests that we're right about to move into a new lesson. Let's go ahead and click on run and see what comes after this one. Okay, we did it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the code. The code's gonna look pretty similar to what we've seen before. There's quite a bit of it. Of course, what we're probably anticipating is that Eventually, we're going to find out how we can leverage uh, certain constructs to avoid having to repeat code like this. Let's see if we have something new coming up next. So th there is this uh, this break here between lessons, which suggests that we that we are actually going to do something. And sure enough, you can see here that they're representing a a loop here in this example. If you're watching the video, they'd probably be explaining exactly what that is. So it's likely that in this particular lesson, that's what we're going to see. Let's have a look at it. It's probably very basic. Every house starts with a wall. Build the first part of your house by putting the place and move forward commands inside the repeat loop. So that's exactly what the previous lesson was doing is it was showing you that you're doing the same thing over and over again. There's definitely going to be a way in programming to simplify that. Simplify things that are repeated more than one time. Let's have a look. All that we need to do is put the move forward into the repeat block. You've got four spaces here. Let's see. We're going to move forward four times. Hopefully that's right. Let's, let's take a look. Okay. Place your blocks on the dirt outline to build a wall. The pink repeat command will run commands placed inside of it, like place block and move forward. Let's try again. All right, that does it. Of course, the first attempt was really just uh, me not paying attention to the instructions. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're reading the instructions from being, beginning to end. Don't get distracted like I'm doing. Make sure you got all the instructions in front of you. Know what you're about to do when you proceed. But that's the nice thing about this is if you mess up, it lets you know gracefully, and you get an opportunity to go back there and try it again. Anyway, there's plenty to do in these in these exercises. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video there, let you discover this on your own. It's a really terrific way to learn how to code. And if, of course, you're a Minecraft fan, then uh, it's going to be something that's familiar to you. It's going to make you feel right at home. Anyway, that's going to conclude the video this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video.